Would you please pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, Lord, be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Early in the morning, while it was still dark, that's when the Easter story begins, while it was still dark. As Saturday evening moved into the early pre-dawn hours of Sunday, the horror and devastating heartbreak of Friday's crucifixion still hangs over those who had loved him, those who had put all of their hopes and had their greatest dreams in his vision of a heavenly kingdom. It was still dark. It was still dark. The day begins in darkness. It begins with fear, bewilderment, pain, and a profound loss of certainty. Three stories in our reading today that Edie Kay shared with us. Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb while it is still dark, but she finds the stone has been rolled away and the tomb is empty. And she goes to find the disciples and tells them that the body is gone. And so then we have the stories of Peter and the disciple that's identified as the disciple that Jesus loved. And the writer of the gospel makes a point of telling us that Peter and this other disciple race each other towards the tomb. And the disciple that Jesus loved reaches the tomb first, but he does not enter. Peter arrives and goes right into the tomb. What do we make of this? Do they think that maybe this is a case of a grave robbery that has happened? Why are they racing each other? Why does the other disciple not go into the tomb first? Peter goes in, sees the burial claws, all of that lying there, but he leaves. He's still in the dark. The other disciple finally enters the tomb, and it says that he sees and believes, but he, along with Peter, goes back home. Mary Magdalene does not return home. She goes in search of someone, someone who could tell her what has happened to the body of Jesus. Mary is still searching. Which one of these are you? Are you Peter who sees the evidence but goes home not having been changed? Or are you the disciple that Jesus loves, who isn't the first to go into the tomb, but he sees the evidence, and he sees and believes? Are you Mary, who sees the empty tomb, but doesn't know what to make of it all? All three of them experience Easter. And the writer of this Gospel of John doesn't judge any of these people. He simply tells the story. And each one of them has faith in the resurrected Christ in their own way. For Peter, it will take a while for him to fully grasp that the Lord is alive. For the other disciple, the one that Jesus loves, he sees the empty tomb and that's all he needs to believe. For Mary, perhaps because her grief was so much greater, it'll take a personal touch to help her understand and believe. I love what happens to Mary, don't you? I love that she runs into someone that she thinks is the gardener. Isn't that a lovely image? She sees someone she believes is a stranger, someone who is caring for the beautiful flowers around her. Little does she know that it is the master gardener who creates beauty 
every day and in every season. Little does she know that it is not a stranger, but the very one she has been searching for. And then she hears him say her name, Mary. And the darkness flees, and the realization of this living, breathing miracle dawns upon her like a new day. This is a new day for her, a new day for all of us. And then she goes to the disciples, to the home where they're at, and she preaches the best Easter sermon ever. No creeds, no convoluted theological treatise attempting to prove that the resurrection really happened. Just a simple statement. I have seen the Lord. Just her own eyewitness testimony. I have seen the Lord. Our reading begins in the dark, but it ends with the acclamation, I have seen the Lord. Though it had been so dark, Mary could say to those who were still in darkness, I have seen the Lord. Theologian and writer Chris Barnes reminds us of what actually matters today. He says, the question of Easter that Easter asks of us is not, do we believe in the doctrine of the resurrection? What the Gospels ask is not, do you believe, but have you encountered the risen Christ? How do we encounter the presence of Christ? It's one thing for Mary to meet Jesus in the garden. It's another thing for you and me to encounter him now. How do we encounter the presence of Christ? There's probably a million answers to that question. I encounter the living presence when I encounter you. When I see how you struggle to make sense of a dark and crazy world. When I see you offering hope and dignity to those who may be forgotten by others. I see and I believe. I see and I know the answer to the question, can we be the presence of Christ to others? It's one thing to believe in the presence of Christ when things are going well when it's sunny, when it's warm, when babies are healthy, when people have roofs over their heads, when love reigns supreme. But it's another to be asked to believe while it is still dark. There's still darkness in their world. While it is still dark, Russia invades a vulnerable neighbor. While it is still dark, terror visits the subway in the world's largest city. While it is still dark, other senseless mass shootings take place, some very close to home. While it is still dark, a virus continues to mutate. While it is still dark, corruption, deception, racism, sexism, suspicion, Rejection, marginalization, misogyny, judgment, fear, and various kinds of abuse continue to chip away at human dignity and stifles life. To say, I have seen the Lord, is to point out resurrection in the midst of ruin. To lift up new life when so much of what we see looks like death. To celebrate decency and goodness and love in the face of hate. To say I have seen the Lord is to declare that the ways of love will win over the ways of hate. I have seen the Lord confirms that 
kindness can be heard over the noise of ruthless, callous, and vindictive rhetoric. I have seen the Lord gives witness to the fact that there's another way of being in the world, a way that is shaped by resurrection, that embodies anything and everything that is life-giving, a way of being that is so countercultural, so demonstrative of mercy, so much an example of the truth of Easter that others will listen to you, they'll watch you, and they'll wonder about you and say, wait a minute, did I just see the Lord? Friends, it's Easter morning. Though there's a lot of darkness, may we, like Mary, search for the one who gives life, the one who is life. May we, like Mary, be surprised when we find that life in unsuspecting ways. And may we offer our own testimony, we have seen the Lord. May it be. Let us pray. Lord of life, submitting to death, you conquered the grave. By being lifted on a cross, you draw all people to you. By being raised from the dead, you restored humanity, all that we have lost through sin. Surprise us, like Mary, with your presence. Call our name that we may respond. Give us courage that we may proclaim the various ways we have seen the Lord. We ask in Christ's name. Amen.